a material death house. Just look at the poster. The poster's genius and it isn't even lying. It's in the movie. And you just got tricked. This is a Mark Polonia film. The first film from Mark Polonia from this series of films. What you need to know about this director is he started uh, making pretty competent amateur films at a very young age, like 15 or 17. Competent, uh, at least considering the technical side of things, he was never good at writing scripts. He was specializing in the physical props. Don't think uh, some Tom Savini level shit, uh, they were working with paper mache or what they could find at home. But it really works in the early films, which are mostly shorts. Uh, in his category, he was very promising. As the time went by, he more and more settled for this level and looked how he can work with the minimal amount of money instead for the quality he can achieve with the money he has in possession and thus he never got into the professional level though I heard he teaches uh, or at least does things uh, in some film teaching university or film school it's really a shame because when he does well I like his stuff, but it's more and more a rarity. But if I can suggest one thing from his uh, repertoire, I would suggest the Feeders trilogy. It is about some aliens coming to Earth for food or, you know, just make a big picnic from the humans. And it's oh, <laughs> the aliens are just sub puppets. Really, just a 30 centimeter sub puppet. Absolutely hilarious. It's working with minimal script. It's just fun. The second is the weakest of the thing because, you know, it was just made at home by a hunch in like an hour or two. But the, the first really shows what Mark Polonia could do. And the third is just was released recently, maybe in 2022. Uh, and it's really worth watching. He got his talent together, he wrote a competent script, and he got used the cameras and found locations and hired some. high amateur level people to act their parts it's just funny it's not some lazily thrown together ripoff of you even made a tune ripoff at some point uh, but uh, the Amityville in space I've seen some of his movies and he just reused set pieces and it was we get to that but the beginning was really good for them but you know just it went on and it just reused set pieces and just dicking around and nothing is happening uh, uh, back to the material death house at the start during the opening montage we see uh, what we will be, what will be the entire movie. Those who will remain after that can watch uh, through how Eric Roberts try to take revenge in the name of some witch burnt at the Salem trials. Uh, he uses so he, he tries to take revenge by the not Necronomicon. It's just a so tired trope that you have this weird looking book 
obviously like the Necronomicon, but you don't want to reference Lovecraft for one reason or the other. I don't, don't really get it. Build your own mythology or just say it's the Necronomicon, fuck it. And yes, it is really Eric Roberts there. That guy, really, if you look back some of the famous actors, how they got famous, they really did one, two, maybe three movies, and then they are just industry names. I don't know how this works. The scenes after that, Eric Roberts just went on doing Asylum movies, and if he gets paid enough, he shows up even for Mark Polonia, really, you have some cash, a couple thousand dollars, you can hire Eric Roberts for a day or two, have fun. On the plus side, uh, there is a Fly POV. It's a really a shame that the, these amateur films slowly but surely forgot about the flies. It was an amateur trope. I like when the brand is recognizable, at least, you know, it's Pokemon is trash, but it's recognizable at some level. Even if you watch some of the anime currently and compare it to the original anime, which was not the best season. Barely has anything to do with it. Even the games, it's pathetically easy, open world, procedurally generated crap. The original was great. I was entirely surprised when I got a copy of it, and it had really high level logic puzzles, and it was crap. Don't misunderstand, I couldn't beat the whatever Pokemon Masters at the end and there was no place to grind up because you know the High Guardians, whatever, Power Rangers at the end uh, were like level 50 or 60 and what you could grind up is the highest level enemies because the trainers do not you cannot uh, rematch with the trainers and the random animals, I mean Pokemon, are spawning level 35 but you want to grind up to level 100 so you're really out of luck. What is kind of saves this movie is there are quite a lot of monsters affecting this but the script is really bad, less focused than Manos the Hand of Fate, which is really needs a re-editing and there is 20-30 minutes in Manos the Hand of Fate, which a good editor could make a really good shot of it. But the budget really limited that movie. There was everything is first take. We rolled in, we will use it because otherwise we just don't have the celluloid for our movie. It had a really interesting background story because it was a bet to make a full theatrical release, so they really had to hire a room in a cinema and they really wrote the film and it was a total flop and MSTK3 found it and if you like a so bad is good movies, Manos the Hand of Fate is a good entry point to the really happy smell and stuff. <laughs> and while uh, for this Amityville Death House the lead actress is kinda cute, Danielle Donahue is written out as the first victim and this is that is really not something you want to do with your strongest actress. I really like the acting of Danielle Donahue but her social media profile is mess. She really has nothing but right-wing politician Twitter account followed. It's ooh, I really don't like that. But she is directing her first movie, and I will very interested in that because I don't care what you do outside your profession when I have to watch your movie. I 
will judge your final product and not what you spill out on Twitter. So J.K. Rowling can fuck herself because her new move is this fantasy animal series is really just bad and it's not bad because she's twittering about trans people are not people but uh, aliens and we should put them into internment camp or something I don't know what really she's social mediaing about but really that I don't care So when Daniel Donahue is out, what you have is just some monster effects which are good, but you know, I would prefer to have a story behind this whole thing and while this seems to be like more a level inspired by the very first Evil Dead or something like that, it's really not that, it's missing the core script that would work. So what does it have to do with Amityville? It plays in the city of Amityville, eventually. Maybe in the house itself, because you know the building looks kind of similar. But really, that's the end of it.